What's up guys? We'll back with Royal Canadian Reptiles. We're back with another weekly vlog for you. This week I was asked a question about breeding loans. Do I do them? How do you do them if you're going to do them? Um, and, and really it's a, it's a topic that not that many people talk about and people just enter into these breeding loans pretty willy-nilly. They don't really plan things out properly. So this week we're going to talk about breeding loans with ball pythons. This week I was asked a question about if I do breeding loans. No. I'll say that again. Do I do breeding loans? No. Absolutely not. I have seen way too many relationships and guys that were once really, really good friends enter into a breeding loan and something happens within that loan that doesn't really work out for, for one of the parties. The reason that I don't do breeding loans is the reason that most breeders don't. Uh, simply because I know that going into this breeding loan, I need to have full transparency. Basically what they're asking me to do is send an animal that I've cared for or I've hatched or I've purchased to someone else or they take their trust and send it to myself. Now, when you get into that kind of thing, there's always going to be questions. Questions are always gonna come up and I have seen way too many times where guys get into these breeding loans and let's face it, when you breed two ball pythons together, depending on the morphs, whatever you're breeding, when you breed those two snakes together, chances are there is that one snake in the clutch that everybody wants. That's the one that you're really shooting for. And when you hit that animal, it becomes really tough to say, well, I get that one or you get that one. People have a really hard time. The other thing that I think is that when people receive an animal, so let's say you guys take an animal from me. Now the ball python breeding cycle takes about eight to nine months. So I send you a female and you're housing it, you're feeding it, you're putting all the money, the, the feed, the time, the electricity, you're putting all of your resources into that animal. Now I've seen people start to think, well, because it's been at my place for eight months, well, I, I think that I own a little piece of this animal. I think if you're going to get into a breeding loan, always, always, always have a contract. You never know what happens. It's easy to say, hey man, like we'll, we'll do a breeding loan together and we'll hatch this and we'll all be happy. The reality is that never happens. You're never happy after them. Somebody always leaves that relationship feeling a little bit mistreated. Uh, I just don't think that they're, they're smart. I, look, so, there's somebody out there with a male that would work perfectly for some of the females that I have. Absolutely perfectly, or vice versa. I have a male that would work perfectly with a project that one of you guys is trying to do. But I always think you're better off to do it on your own. Whether it takes you an extra two or three years, you did it yourself, and you get the satisfaction of knowing that you did it on your own. There's, there's never going to be a dispute over how many, well, how do you split up the clutch? Let's say she does lay, you, you get six eggs, okay, do you split, you mark the eggs before they're, before they're laid, one, two, three are mine, one, two, three are yours, well, what if all of the good snakes come in the, the, the last three eggs of the clutch? It, it's, it's really a crapshoot, and it's just something that I'm not prepared to enter into. The other thing that I've seen happen is... I send one of you guys my animal. Now we breed, you breed her, and she doesn't, she doesn't produce eggs for you that year. Well, now all of a sudden, one of you guys are sitting there going, well, well, what if she's retained the sperm from my, my male? I don't want to send her back to you. And I've just seen way, way, way too many relationships go down the drain because of breeding loans. Someone's always unhappy, and you need to really, really, really trust that person because at the end of the day, you end up, we are dealing with animals, but these animals have a monetary value. And when you start to deal with money, people get weird. So that's my thought on breeding loans. I personally don't do them. If you guys are going to, I really recommend drawing up a contract where everything is written in stone. Think of every possible scenario and 
make sure you you have that contract written so that when those eggs hatch or whatever scenario you run into, you know that you can always fall back on that contract and say, no, 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 this is what was written, this is what was signed by both of us, this is what was agreed upon. There's no changing it after the fact. Anyway guys, this weekend we're going to be shooting the Breeding Bull Pythons Part 2. So we last time we looked at the Pastel Clown and the Chocolate Enchi Desert Ghost, we're going to ultrasound them again, see how they're developing. So make sure you subscribe if you want to catch that, uh, catch that little mini series that we're doing. Really appreciate all the support you guys have been giving us. I can't thank you enough. And uh, again, we'll see you this weekend. Take care, guys.